Michigan. The lady, the ladies from Colorado, Miss Gobert. <laughs> On. All right. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to all the witnesses who are here today. I really appreciate all of your expertise. Um, obviously, we're witnessing one of the most significant self-owns in American history. Um, the Biden regime uh, has taken hardworking American um, patriotic people and pummeled them with hardship after hardship. And it's, it's very difficult. Um, the, the average a annual cost of inflation on the middle class um, income is about $5,200, just under $450 a month. Um, consider what that means for a family of four making under $75,000. The average price of a gallon of gas is at a record highs and looks primed to soar even higher. And we've talked about a lot of these numbers um, already. And, and Mr. Moore, I'm really grateful that you are pointing out Congress's mistakes. Um, I think that's why a lot of us are actually here, because we, we notice the mistakes that Congress makes. And uh, we, we came here to try to do something about that. Um, but you, know, you, you mentioned welfare. Um, I, I would tag on to that, as I'm sure you have and do, um, the, the stimulus payments um, that were made, um, the checks to government employees who were at no risk for losing their jobs, never did lose their job. They kept their job, were able to work from home, and, um, and then still got that. Uh, then, of course, the unemployment benefits that you mentioned, just printing money. And thank you so much for bringing up the payroll tax. I'm a small business owner. And I almost think that that should be um, one of the qualifying things that we look at uh, at candidates who run to serve in, in the United States Congress. Have you ever signed the front of a paycheck? Because a lot of people don't understand what goes into that. And so cutting payroll tax would have been something that would have been amazing. Um, but Joe Biden, on the other hand, um, often talks about Americans needing conti to continue to pay their fair share. Uh, Americans have been asked to spend thousands more uh, each year effectively to subsidize the trillions of dollars in new spending undertaken um, by this administration. Um, the federal government spent $7 trillion in 2020 alone. Uh, and Mr. Moore, you were in our budget committee hearing uh, the other day when we were talking about the Build Back Better. It really would have been better off if he would have just left things the way they were. Don't touch every anything. Leave it alone. Um, but if you ask the Democrat House budget chairman, uh, John Yar Yarmuth, he'd just tell you that we don't have to balance the checkbook. We are like the banker in Monopoly. We hand out the money. And we create the money, and everybody else plays the game. And Americans have seen their paychecks thin out, their 401ks decimate, and they've seen energy prices skyrocket. Um, we, we have the ability to unleash our full energy um, production here in America. And um, with that, I want to turn to you, Mr. Epstein. Um, the Biden regime has claimed that there's nothing Joe Biden could have done to prevent today's gasoline prices. You've written that Joe Biden... Uh, had Joe Biden not spent the last year and a half opposing oil and instead spent his time liberating U.S. oil production and encouraging the rest of the world to do the same, gasoline prices would be far, far loader, lower. Can you explain why, please? Sure. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, the, the argument that seems plausible is, oh, it's a global market, so we can't control it. So the obvious lie there is you can control the U.S. energy market, which is a huge market. But also, you are the leader of the free world. Imagine Joe Biden had come into office in 2021 and said, hey, there's this dangerous anti-fossil fuel movement. As soon as we recover from this pandemic lockdown, there's going to be way more demand than supply. We need to reject the Paris Agreement. We need to stay out of it. And we need to tell others to get out of it. If you had opposed the global anti-fossil fuel movement and encouraged energy freedom around the world, you would have had a proliferation of oil production, natural gas production, coal production, and you wouldn't have these problems at all. We'd be going through a global energy renaissance, not a global energy crisis. So Biden instead has been leading the world away from fossil fuels. He's been very aggressively pressuring nations to go away from fossil fuels. So he did the exact wrong thing, and he turned the opportunity for an energy renaissance into a global energy crisis. Uh, thank you. And Mr. Epstein, uh, a follow-up. In May, Joe Biden canceled three sales amounting to millions of acres that would have been available for drilling. He hasn't even issued a single new lease sale to date. And we're still waiting on the new national program for the 2022 through 2027 period. A few weeks ago, the American Energy Alliance 
published a comprehensive list of 100 ways the Biden regime has made it more difficult to produce oil and gas. 32 of those occurred after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Do you think that the Biden regime's repeated attempts at deflection are convincing the American people? Time has expired, um, but I'll let you answer. I hope, I, I hope not. But it's, it's, I think the key is to make it really simple and say prices are set by supply and demand. The Biden administration restricted supply and encouraged the rest of the world to do the same. And that made prices go up by restricting supply while demand increases. And don't, don't allow the people who caused this crisis to overcomplicate it or to distort it. Thank you very much, Mr. Epstein. And Mr. Chairman, may I submit my other questions to Mr. Moore for a response later? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. you.